everybody, it's Pete. Welcome to Stocks for Breakfast. It is Wednesday, March 25th, 2020. Stimulus bill passed last night. We're getting some nice push to the upside. Actually, a decent amount of stuff to talk today that's very trading related as far as doing analysis. Uh, but the most important part of today's video is we got a really good question from Glenn yesterday, uh, which by the way, if you have any questions, absolutely post a comment below the video. We'll get to it as soon as we can and subscribe uh, if you haven't yet. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, today we're going to talk about what do you actually do after the market opens. So in other words, the stock market opens and you got all this fluctuation all over the place. Uh, and there's so many different things to look at, especially in that volatile, fast moving part of the open. Uh, if you know anything about me, if you've been in my course, if you've been in my coaching program or you've been watching the videos, I am really, really big on have the guts to do a trading plan and predict what you think is going to happen when the market opens. And, and really the way to, to really drill this point home is if you have 10 stocks and based on reading the tape and the market opens the next day and you say in these 10 stocks, I think these stocks are going to open higher. These stocks are going to open lower. I think as soon as they open, they're going to push higher and then continue or push higher and sell off. Have the guts to do that because what ends up happening is you'll have 10 stocks that you create a game plan. And yes, that's how detailed your game plan should be. Two out of 10, let's just say for argument's sake, two out of 10 do exactly what you think they're going to do. And the other eight don't do anything you think they were supposed to do. Now, here's the comments that I always get from people, which I think is crazy. They'll say, but eight out of 10 didn't do what I expected to. Two out of 10 did exactly what you thought it was going to do. Print money in those two. Who cares about the other eight? Make money when it's obvious. If you go in saying these stocks are going to do it, I'll give you an example. Let's say for argument's sake, a stock is in a bullish order flow and we pull back and it closed on the lows two days in a, in a row. And today you're looking for the stock to open flat, push lower as, as the end of that profit taking. And then after it pushes lower by 75 cents, you're going to start to look for an entry signal on the 15 minute chart. Something as simple as that. And yes, it needs to be that detailed. And if it does exactly what you expect, bam, you got your money for the day. You got your money and your trade for the day. So what we're going to talk about today, thanks first of all, Glenn, for the question. We're going we're gonna to get into two charts really quick, and then I'm going to show you exactly what to do after the stock market opens within the first 30 minutes and show you probably what is the most confusing thing for people to do when the market opens, which is how do I watch everything when there's so much going on? Well, first of all, you should be watching the market and your stocks that are in your game plan. Uh, but even if you want to watch a bigger list, I'll show you how to do that too. So let's go to the Let's go to the uh, share the screen and we're going to get right into it. So you can obviously see the uh, the stimulus package finally did um, get approved last night. Uh, just huge overnight booze. However, now this is it was anticipated. So if you remember in, in Monday's video, we said the case against selling short the new we were not pushing down as hard after the market opened. We weren't trending down after the market opened. We weren't closing near the lows after the market opens. So again, getting to, to the point where you're going to be a great trader, you start to avoid scenarios that don't make sense. So you keep that money in your pocket and then you get better at making trades when it's super obvious. So we ended up yesterday getting a nice, really strong rally. This is obviously the futures. We're going to get into stocks in a second. Uh, and then the package actually got um, approved overnight so you can see the giant spike we'll pull them back a little bit it'll be interesting to see um, but i want to talk about something incredibly quickly i don't, I don't want to beat this point into the ground i want to get into the vix but it's an important um trading uh concept um so we had a really good question we did a short video on it yesterday of how to use the vix in normal market conditions uh what should happen so the vix should be advancing and stocks should decline at the same time if the vix is going down which means fear is coming out of the market, stocks should rally. But you can see here yesterday, the VIX actually traded, I'm going to say almost violently higher, uh, while at the same time that the market was trading higher at the end of the day. And that, that doesn't make sense, right? The VIX should be going down with the market up. Uh, the SPY was up gigantic yesterday, uh, 9%. The Dow is over 2,000 yesterday. So why did that happen? That, you know, again, why doesn't matter as much when you're trading? You just have to trade what you're saying. But why did that happen was the potentiality of massive volatility if 
the stimulus package got passed or if it didn't. There's going to be wild movement in both directions, massive excitement or massive disappointment. So the VIX was going higher because that meant options market makers and the options market had to price the options more expensively to compensate for all of the expected volatility. So that's why there was a disconnect yesterday. So I think it was kind of uh, kind of like a one-two punch first in yesterday's video to explain what you normally would do using the VIX as a secondary indicator to see what's going on in your stocks. And that's the, they go opposite in normal market conditions. But some good questions yesterday on why they, they weren't doing the same thing. And that's why the market was anticipating uh, a bigger volatility. Uh, so getting back to some trading scenarios from yesterday, I, I was asked, what were the best opportunities yesterday? Of course, I'm going to start out with the SPY, uh, and then I'll go into a couple of stocks just to illustrate, keep illustrating the point. So the best trade of the day yesterday, you see you had the high here, which was uh, 238 up here in the opening range. So the opening 15-minute window, actually I might be able to see it easier on a five-minute chart. So this was the opening 15-minute window. So really the, the opening trade while we were above the opening range and gapping. So again, higher above the previous day's high, above the previous day's close, and above the open should only be looking for longs at that point. Uh, at this point, the perfect trade was above the opening range, pulled back. Uh, you might have gotten stopped out here, but then you got actually a swing low here for this trade. You actually got another breakout here, which was a losing trade, right? So a small loss. But this trade here was actually um, the trade of the day because um, you actually perfectly hold the opening price. You get a really, you get an indecision candle here, which is a, uh, a candle with a small body indecision, meaning it opened and closed in the same area. And you get a swing low and you can see that you get a really nice push into the close. Um, so the opposite of that, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, which was Netflix with the market really strong yesterday. If you remember coming into the day, we talked about Netflix being strong um, and well bid a few days in a row. So we actually got some profit taking. But if we zoom back down to the intraday charts, Netflix was below the opening price the entire day. On a day the market was strong, <clears throat> which means that you would not have done anything because it was relatively weak to the market, which takes me into Glenn's question, which is a really super good question. What do you do in the first 30 minutes? But I'm going to expand it. This is actually what you do the entire day. So essentially what you're going to do, and this kind of gets into actually uh, a secret when I was managing my firm. We had, uh, I think if at our peak, we had 275 traders trading our capital. Um, how did I manage all that risk? And really it came down to, I was mostly focused on the traders that were not making money and helping them get back to positive. So the top of the list and the traders that were positive, helping them push their winners. So very much the same way when the market opens, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to, we're going to go over here and whatever scanner you happen to use, it's not really as relevant. You know, my minimum criteria, right? A million five, uh, two million shares on average, average range $1.50. <clears throat> You're going to be scanning for stocks that are up on the day or bullish day and stocks that are positive from the open. So they're meeting two of the short term criteria for what it means to be bullish. So today's order flow, but this is actually even more powerful if we put the whole pieces together here. We have positive for the month, which in, I believe in the software means the last 22 days, above the 20, above the 50, and above the 200. So longer term bullish order flow, which is powerful, right? Combined with today's order flow, positive change from the previous close and a positive change from today's open. So those are the most powerful stocks where all of the scenario is on the same page. Now, there's a lot more to reading order flow and whatnot, but I'm giving you general guidelines of what you can do. So that would be your list of stocks positive coming into today, right? So that would be, okay, these are the, now obviously you'd look to see, are they actually trending? Uh, are, are they, do they have room to go? So you'd actually pull up the stocks and look a little deeper. And ironically, none of these stocks meet that criteria, maybe QGen, but this stock, ZS, it's been in the list for a while now. Uh, it's actually at resistance. Maybe you can make a case for net. So again, you got to go a step deeper. That's why you got to go in and read the tape. Uh, but that's the general idea of what to do coming into the day, right? Now, what do you do after the market opens, which was Glenn's question. So I'm, gonna, I'm just using a free software here. Uh, you can log in. I think it's freestockcharts.com. I, I try not to use anything that's paid so that it's easy for you to go and implement the strategies yourself. So we're going to focus over here. So what you can see here is now in the watch list, as the market's 
positive or negative. So let's just say the first thing you're going to do is look, you're going to look at the three major indices. You're going to look at the spiders, the NASDAQ, uh, the NASDAQ, which you could use the NDX or you can use the Qs completely up to you, or you could use the diamonds, the DIA or the Dow completely up to you. But let's say you're using those three. You want to have those, are they positive with bullish or bearish order flow? Are they positive with the change from yesterday's close? And are they positive with the change from today's open? Those are the premier stocks. And, and, and in that case, and not the stocks, those are the premier indices to say, okay, all the money's on the same page or all the money's not on the same page. Let's just say for argument's sake, like yesterday they were. Then you have your list of stocks. As the market's unfolding during the day, you're gonna sort the columns by net change from today's open and net change from the previous close. So you're going to have two different lists. You're going to come into the day saying, here's my list of stocks I'm looking to buy, and here's my stocks I'm looking to short sell. So if that top list of the market, which is the, the SPY, the NASDAQ, and the diamonds or the Dow are positive with all the criteria that we just mentioned, then you'd go only to your list of stocks that are positive. However, if the market during the day starts to reverse and all those go positive, now you sort your list and you automatically in a heartbeat can tell which should be the first stocks that you trade. So this is kind of like my super secret ninja trading technique of how to watch thousands of stocks at the same time. Obviously you're not gonna have thousands of stocks, but you get the idea. Thousands of stocks, 20 stocks, 30 stocks, 50 stocks, it doesn't matter. Once the market opens, you're only concerned with those stocks intraday that meet the criteria for you to give your best attention to that in my terminology means the perfect trade. So Glenn, very good question. So exactly what does that mean? So you're watching it. <clears throat> Netflix wouldn't even be on our list. But and again, the list isn't that big here. That's how you watch stocks during the day. So as your stock watch is unfolding and changing and prices are changing, you're going to end up seeing some stocks that are positive from the close, but negative from today's open. You leave them alone. They're not meeting the criteria. Today's price action, today's order flow is not matching what you consider a bullish day. So as the market's unfolding during the day, Obviously, I'm illustrating in here by drawing a line for you every single day, but using a stock watch is a terrific way to, um, to sort a really big list of stocks, which again, don't have a monster list, especially until you, your, your trading business can generate revenue. And, and again, this is the easiest way to understand this. There's no reason to come out with a business that has a second, a third, a fourth, and fifth product uh, if your first one's not making any money. You have to, you, you, maybe you can go to a different stock, but don't have a monster list. Don't spread your focus until you can prove that your strategy works and number two, that you can follow it and you're trading the right stocks. Uh, so that, so Glenn, very good question. So as the market's opening, I'm watching the first opening price and pushes off the opening price. I'm watching then the 15 minute window and how prices are trading at the opening price above the previous window, long-term order flow, yesterday's close, yesterday's open and putting all those pieces together which if you, if you keep watching the videos, which gosh, I hope you really do, you start to build an argument where your, your confidence just goes through the roof because it's no longer a guess anymore. The, the most amazing thing that somebody who's in the coaching program could say to me is, I couldn't find anything today. And do you know why that makes me smile? Because that means that they're looking for something specific instead of just looking for a spot to enter. When you get to the point where you have a strategy, like hopefully you're, you're putting the pieces together now, right? You have a strategy and say, well, I can't find any stocks that meet my strategy. That's when you know you're getting closer to really breaking through the other side, being in absolute control of how much money you could make. So what I gave you today is a basic structure. Obviously, there's some more pieces to that, um, but that's a basic structure of how to work your way down from the criteria of which stocks you look at, which stocks might go into your list, what is the market doing today, and then ultimately, which stocks right now, based on longer term order flow and today's order flow, should I be focusing my attention on? So I hope this really gave you a good idea. So, you know, obviously we talked about the SPY. We mentioned Tesla. We went into night. Actually, you know what? I want to briefly go into a couple of stocks um, that had uh, some earnings yesterday. Nike had earnings. I just want to take a quick look at that. Um, so Nike's actually up $7. So Nike had a really good bullish day yesterday. Let's actually take a look. Uh, so it's actually had a really good bullish yesterday. But again, very quick looking at it. Seven-day trading range, nothing going on. Did not sell off with the rest of the market. So relatively strong to what the market was doing over the last seven days. Uh, Going to open up higher today. 
Uh, I like Nike bullish today, but I don't like Nike bullish out of the open because if you think about it, yesterday was 64 to what was the high yesterday? 70, let's call it 70, 72. So an $8 move yesterday plus another $7 today, that's $15 from yesterday's low to today's open. I'd let that pull back a little bit before I'm, I'm looking to uh, get in there and bid for stock. Um, so that's that's what we're looking at today. Hopefully now you can get in there, whatever stock you normally trade, make your own list, scan like that, and have absolute confidence um, when the market opens. There's nothing better in the market to say, I know exactly what I'm looking at, I know why I'm making money, and then prove to yourself, and that's the last piece, the market doesn't give you money, prove to yourself that you can get in there and um, follow your plan because it's not whether or not the market's having a great day or a great week. It'll always end up giving you opportunity for the month at some point, and 40% of that will end up being where you actually get paid, right? But it's your job to follow the plan. That's where trading mastery comes from. It's not having a super secret signal. It's can you have the discipline? And the first part of that discipline is saying to yourself, the reason I don't get paid is because I take all those dumb trades. Yesterday, I called them the dumb tax. You pay that dumb tax until you wake up. When you start to eliminate the dumb tax, you go right to the other side and you immediately become profitable because you're not giving money away. And then as you work your strategy, learn how to work leverage, learn how to work risk and learn ultimately how to hold your trades. That's where the beauty of being a professional stock trader is or just any stock trader for that matter. But you're a stock trader who is in control of how you get paid, how much. The only skill after that is learning how to hold your winning trades longer. Thanks so much for attending today. Have an awesome day. Please subscribe if you like the video. Uh, and absolutely, if you have any questions like Glenn did, leave a question uh, below the video. Have an awesome day, everybody.